How are you, Dave? I'm good. I think I'm... Um... I think I've written for Coronation Street in the last four months. What? Like. It, how many... Is anyone going to say anything <laughs> true to me today? John's obsessed with truth. I, I really am obsessed with truth, Dave. Let me take you back. About six months ago, I talked you through a jaunty little song that I sing for Lila when I'm presenting her with her cereal in the morning. Uh-huh. I've got a clip here of, of how that went a few months ago. Do you want to hear one of my songs to Lila? Oh, yeah, go on then. So there's always two cereals that she wants... She either wants frozen cereal or Cocoa Pops. So I've got the frozen box in one hand. I've got the Cocoa co- 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 Box in the other. And you're kind of using them as maracas. So you shake them like in beat with it. And the song is, Do you want your Cocoa Pops? Do you want your frozen? Do you want your Cocoa Pops? Do you want your frozen? Do you want your Cocoa Pops? Or do you want your frozen? Cocoa Pops are frozen. Cocoa Pops are frozen. Cocoa Pops. Extraordinary. It's a good song, right? Yeah. It's a good song. Someone tweeted me about four weeks ago saying something very similar happened on the opener of Coronation no. Street. And I genuinely, I want your take because I watched it and I thought, well, that's played. That, I should be getting paid thousands for writing some pretty decent content for mm. ITV's Premier Soap. Um, so here's the clip from Coronation Street. Imran is, uh, funnily enough, presenting some cereal to his child. Right. Do you want a yogurt or do you want some cocoa pops? Do you want the yogurt or do you want the cocoa pops? Do you want a yogurt? Elsie, choose, please, please, because my ears can't take any more. What do you reckon? Dave, I am. That is extraordinary. That's I am. pretty good, right? You've got a disgusted. case. disgusted. What do I do? Who do I speak to? Uh, speak to your agent. Have you heard of the old Bailey? Oh, not got an agent. Okay, hire me as your agent now. No, I think that'd be quite intense. Hire me as your agent now. <laughs> Ellis, can I use my agent? Do you, uh, what, you want Ellis as your agent? <laughs> yeah, I want the anecdote you... chameleon as my, as my I'll agent. Lie, I'll lie at the old Bailey. <laughs> Good grief. But in all seriousness, I was I was in two minds, but that's be- that is surely because one, someone's heard my belter of a tune. One of, yeah, the, yeah, writ- yeah, yeah, one yeah. of the writers at Coronation Street has pinched that. Yeah. I'm fine with it, by the way. I'm, well, I'm, can't look at the credits. Well, Contact not be, the writers. I'm not going to say Dave Masterman, is it? You send them a cease and desist letter <laughs> saying, if you do not take Coronation Street off the air now, we will sue you for a billion pounds. Imagine. Oh, because obviously it's always this, the great rivalry, isn't it? BBC One's EastEnders versus ITV's Coronation Street. Imagine yes. if this is the thing that finally kills off Corrie. But have I got IP, intellectual property? Because have I signed You've broadcast it. it. Yes. You've, yeah, yeah. you've uh, made it clear that it's your own work. Have you registered with PRS? <laughs> No. Right. So no. you wouldn't get any money if it was played, for example, in an arts centre foyer? No. <laughs> no. Um, of course not. But I think you do, because it's obviously the recording is time stamped, we have a case. But Dave, take me on as your agent. I'll make this happen. Okay, you're hired. That's okay, your legal I want 20%. 20? Yeah, 20%. 20? Yeah, 20 12 and a half. No, 12 and a half. 20%, because I'm also a brand manager, Dave. <laughs> I will manage Brand Masterman. Brasterman. That's the first oh, that's idea. Good stuff. Yeah, Brasterman. Yeah, yeah. So I've come up with, so that's why I'm earning my money, Dave. He's got portmanteaus. On I have. Screen. John's had more ideas than I've had hot dinners. <laughs> True. <laughs> I think he even told me that. <laughs> uh, right, folks. Uh, if you are a lawyer or a solicitor or a barrister or a Coronation Street writer or a Coronation like Street to writer. Apologize. Yeah, do you know what? I would take an on-air apology and we, we'd call it quits today. But we would want an admission of guilt. Yes, yeah. oh, absolutely. And um, an admission of remorse. <laughs> yeah. So if you yeah. are a writer for Coronation Street, please get in touch on 85058 or tweet at BBC Five Live using the hashtag Ellis and John um, to uh, first apologise and then admit remorse <laughs> and admit uh, your mistake. I, in, am, I am fine with it. In stealing Dave's lyrics and tune, though Imran did display a higher, a bit bigger range there. I think the tune yeah. is where this is going to fall down. I mean, the idea is clearly the same, but his, his melody was different. It's the classic was, stairway to heaven problem. Yeah, yeah. But whose was better? I think I gave him Augusto. Well, let's not dwell on that because that's not the issue. The yeah. issue is not who's best, it's who's going to pay. You're listening to Ellis James and John Robbins on BBC Radio 5 Live. Now, regular listeners will know that last week Dave accused Coronation Street of stealing his intellectual and his songwriting property. Uh, isn't that true, Dave? Yes. 
Yes. Uh, so what happened was you're a bit nervous there, Dave, weren't you, accusing Corey of theft? But then you thought, no, actually, I'm going to I'm going to stun well, the ground it, here. It's the tongue in cheek. Obviously, I was being playful. I'm not actually going to you know take anyone to court. Well, you've for got it, solicitors but... involved. Yeah, yeah. Um, so just to remind listeners, uh, Dave made up a song for his daughter Lila to help her choose what she wanted for breakfast. Let's hear that song now. Do you want your Cocoa Pops? Do you want your Frozen? Do you want your Cocoa Pops? Do you want your Frozen? Do you want your Cocoa Pops or do you want your Frozen? Cocoa Pops are frozen, Cocoa Pops are frozen, Cocoa Pops. It's a chilling melody. <laughs> um, and Lila then, cannot get enough. She can't get enough of it. And good to see that she's got a healthy, balanced diet. <laughs> um, uh, so, and then Dave was watching Coronation Street. Uh, because he's a stereotype. And, uh, he's drinking Boddingtons as well. Drinking Boddingtons, <laughs> weren't you, Dave? Yeah, my flat cap on. Uh, yeah, yeah. S- cycling up a hill with some bread in your back. <laughs> he's, he's stroking his whip bit. <laughs> and uh, heard the, a very, very similar tune. Let's hear it now. Do you want a yogurt or do you want some Cocoa Pops? Do you want the yogurt or do you want the Cocoa Pops? Do you want a yogurt? Elsie, choose, please, please, because my ears can't take any more. Right. Now, I think it's pretty clear to us here that something has been stolen from I, Dave Masterman. I don't think there's a court in the land who deny it. No, no. The Twelve men right and true and women and children. No, you can't have children in a jury. Twelve men and women, right and true, would definitely find a day's favour. But to confirm or deny, we now have on the line Jan. Hello, Jan. Hello. Jan, could you tell us what it is you do for a living, please? I am said Coronation Street scriptwriter. <gasps> no way! Wow. Okay. Jan, we and have you'll, gone... have to, you'll have to excuse me for my croaky voice, but the pressure of bringing the entire ITV network to its knees. <laughs> mm, mm, Not mm. sleepless nights since last week's episode, I'm afraid. So, Jan, could you please uh, set aside all doubt as you tell us where it was that you got inspiration for the song used in Coronation Street? Okay. In my defence, I would say one man's plagiarism is another woman's homage. Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> I am a oh. regular listener of the show. The brief was to write a warm and tender scene between a loving dad and his new foster daughter. You cast your mind about for great dads in history, great oh. Mancunian dads in oh, history. Jan. There's only one name springs to mind. It's got to be Masterman. <laughs> this is so, amazing. You know, that's that's where it came from. And, and it also in my defence, I did put those words in the mouth of Charlie DeMello, who has to be about the most handsome man on British telly. Yes. yes. So I hope that cushions the blow for you, Dave. I'm just Googling him. And you'll call him. off the attack dogs. Uh, how do you spell <laughs> Charlie? Oh, Charlie DeMello. I'm just yes. Googling him. Exceptionally oh, handsome. Oh. Brilliant actor. I mean, I know uh, COVID protocol doesn't allow us to kiss the screens here in our studio, but I am sorely tempted. Um, so it is, it, just to confirm, you heard Dave do the song. You loved it so much. When you needed a song for the show, you appropriated Dave's melody and lyrics. Uh, shamelessly, yeah. Oh. Well, this is big news because I wasn't sure, Jan. I, I listened and, well, I was watching the the drama and I thought there's a chance but at the same time my rendition of uh, Frozen Cocoa Pops is probably broad enough that someone could do something similar so it is this is amazing big. news this is big news <laughs> yeah so what so when you heard me sing the song is that then something that you scribbled down and you thought I could be using that maybe in weeks to come or was it when you knew that you had to come up with something similar it it was when I was sitting there, you know, it's it's a lonely job. You're there staring out the window, talking to the dog. You take your inspiration where you can find it. And I, it did make me laugh at the time when I heard you doing that and it just sprung to mind and I thought, oh, I've got to use that. Wow. So, Are there any other elements of this show you would like to get into an episode of Coronation Street? <laughs> <laughs> well, I... I've been thinking about it, actually. We've we've used quite a lot of uh, comedians over the years. I don't know whether this is of any interest. We've had uh, Peter Kay. very lovely, d- yeah, Peter Kay, Justin Morehouse. Oh yeah, John Thompson. Yes, and uh, the late great Sean Hughes. So um, you know, maybe there would be an avenue for. Are you about to ask <gasps> Ellis to do your voiceover? <laughs> <laughs> because if you if you do so, help me God, I will snap. <laughs> 
So what are you saying well, we could get Ellis and John on, Corrie? Who knows? Who knows? I'd have to speak oh, to my boss, wouldn't I? He's Jan, very accommodating. Jan, you know the people in the Rovers Return who are extras who just sit there drinking pints throughout yeah. the day? How, 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 can you, how can you be one of those? And are they real pints? <laughs> Uh, no, they're not real pints. Oh. But you know what? I don't want to destroy the magic of television by giving mm. all our secrets away. Have you, obviously, because you listen to the show, so you 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 paid this homage to uh, to Dave. Is there anyone else who you like, sort of from your personal life, who who you've managed to sneak into Corey? Well, I have. I, I try. Although I am a proud Scouser, I do admire Manchester and Manchester culture. So if I ever get a chance to. Uh, big up people that I admire. So I have I have name checked John Bramwell before. If I am oh, close, because wow. I really admire so. Yeah. The other my other one is I um, there is now a Marky Smith Suite <gasps> at Weatherfield Town Hall. No, but we have to we have to sneak these things un- under the radar, and they're not always noticed. So, did you have to justify that? To anyone, did you no. have to say no? I I I really think the Marky Smith Suite does suit the uh, sort of vibe of Coronation Street? Well, sometimes, well, all of these things are checked out by the lawyers. And, um, you know, if you can sneak them under the radar of the lawyers, then it's okay. You don't always know that it's going to make it to transition because the scripts all go to about five or six drafts and sometimes they'll film a scene and then have to cut it for time. So you never actually know um, until you're you're watching it whether you've got one over the line. But it's a great, you know, it's it's a great feeling when you do. <laughs> well, thank you, Jan McVerry, so much uh, for joining us and for explaining that, yes, we as a show have got a bit of content on Coronation Street. And we do wish you all the best with continuing to write for Corrie. Uh, but it leads us to this week's text topic, which is when have you had your thoughts stolen? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds a bit harsh, because now we yeah, know Jan's is. lovely and very yeah. charming. Yeah, we're being feels a bit much now. We're Thought like tribute, that. we should call this. Yes. Or when have you? Step. When has your IP been uh, used by a company, and you think, hang on, a bit like once, Dave? Yeah. About I, three years ago, I know. I was in Tesco, and I thought, why don't they do my favourite hot sauce in a squeezy bottle? That's not the one I'm thinking of. Six months later, it was there. How did they know? Because they were listening to my thoughts. That's how. What were you thinking of? On Radio X, when you were making fun of an advert for Nescafe, and it was, you can't email a hug. So a number of people have uh, made us aware, and I saw this as well, the new uh, Nescafe advert, which is on billboards everywhere, with a baby on a parent's shoulder, and it says, you can't email a hug. (laughs) Utter nonsense, yes. Nescafe. You also, you, do you know what also you can't email? Coffee. Yeah. So what on earth are you talking about? Just because it's such lazy advertising. Just because someone's hugging their child doesn't mean that coffee is better than email. It's just complete rubbish. Who, just because you're you're losing out to ground coffee, what, what, you're not going to make someone suddenly want to drink don't, yeah, crappy coffee don't, just because kids hug parents, don't, for goodness don't sake. Don't take it out on the most important method of communication that's happened in the last thousand years. Absolutely. Just because your coffee isn't up to scratch. I was always a Kenko man when it came to instant anyway. Yeah. Can't and, email And do you know what? I'm a father to a young baby. You can email a hug. Done it. Yeah, you just use a circle. <laughs> <laughs> Idiots. O or zero, they both work. Yeah. You said, well, you can't email a coffee. Big laughs. Big laughs. <laughs> and then someone tweeted that word for word and it got 25,000 yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. tweets. I remember that. Uh, but sometimes you just got to let it lie and DM the person saying that if you ever, ever, ever do that again, you'll be hearing from my lawyers.